<laughs> Let's get to our trivia answer here before we get to the Spurs. I'm going to sprinkle this in all season, but it's really going to throw a, it's really going to put me under the bus if if Bonix actually does start and he sucks, then I'm going to really have to eat some crow. But um, anyway, let's get to the trivia answer. So what year did the Spurs see the biggest single season turnaround? Chuck, give me give me your reasoning and thought process and then give me your answer. Uh, off the top of my head, I'll just stay with this. Not that this has served me well by any stretch of the imagination. Was it the 97-98 year? The, the year they got Tim? And did they get Tim in 97-98 or was it... Yes, that was the year, right? Or was it, it was 96, year, it 97? Was the, it was the year right before the strike season. That would, that would yes. be the year that you're talking about. Well, yeah, 99 was the strike year. But I'll say it was the first year that Tim got to the Spurs. But who threw out Dave? That was a good one. The, you made me have to reconsider I've, that. I've just given you guys all the options. Uh, Bob, you got a guess? Yeah, I'm going to go with the same You can go with Chuck as well. Yeah. So I will tell you that the two seasons that are at the top of this list are – are uh, separated by one win. Really? So the season that David Robinson came to the Spurs, 88-89, they went from 20 wins to 55 wins. So that was a 35-win jump. And the, I think it's 97-98, I believe you're correct, um, they went from 20 wins to 56 wins. So Go Chuck, with, go with your correct. gut. Jack is correct, but it's crazy to me that they took a that they went from twenty to fifty five, twenty to fifty six with one, with the addition of one player. But that that ninety seven ninety eight season, it wasn't just the addition of one player. It was also David getting back healthy. It was Sean Elliott getting back healthy. It was Avery being healthy. It was all those guys. That the reason that they were a twenty one team wasn't because they didn't have the dudes. It was because they had the worst luck ever. <laughs> right, and because of that, and the injuries was the reason why they were even in the mix to get Tim. And then have the ping pong balls go their way. So it was every now and then you got to get lucky. Who yeah, was the this. coach that Pop replaced? Bob Hill. Yeah, that was a that was a big improvement as well. I mean, I don't know, man. Do, I, I like Bob Hill. I mean, I, <laughs> like, can't can't. I mean, Bob Hill won a lot of damn ball games. Yeah, you got, in they, the NBA, they had been in the playoffs like every yep. single year under him. So, yep. um, all right, let's get to the Spurs here. So the. ESPN is the gift that keeps on giving sometimes when it uh, comes to content and things for us to talk about because they need things to talk about on their shows. So they um, released a poll, I guess, from a lot of their experts and asked them to make predictions about this upcoming season. The experts basically rated the Spurs as the second most likely team to make that jump and, and make a major leap next season, right behind the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies obviously... They now have, they're getting John Morant back. They just drafted Zach Eady. That is what it is. They have a lot of guys that, that didn't play last year that are now going to come back. Jaron Jackson Jr., who we know very well here in San Antonio. His father is still a coach here, I believe. Um, yep. He, he is back as well. They still have Desmond Bain. They still have a lot, a lot of guys. I thought it was interesting that they're picking the Spurs to be number two because as much as the improvements – as much as the team has improved this offseason, which we believe with the Chris Paul, with the Harrison Ingram, with the uh, Harrison Barnes signings, like all of these things, with Stephon Castle, all these things, I think we think our, their ceiling is 35, 40 wins. I mean, Don is thinking 45 would be maybe the ceiling there, but I don't know if they're, good, they're a playoff team yet. Yeah, I don't know either, but you know, I think the hope would be, at least for me, you know, hopefully you have a 500 team here next year. You know, somebody that can compete for one of those bottom end playoff spots. But, you know, the way you put it too with Memphis, that's pretty sound reasoning as to why you think that. I mean, because if you can add a player like a Ja Morant and a talent like that, I mean, that's got to count for a lot. Yeah. And then that you, guy, I mean, that's one of the few guys in this league I would pay money to go watch play every single night. And then you, when look, he's available, <laughs> when he's, when he's not getting in trouble. Um, <laughs> hopefully that's all behind him. Yes. Um, what is? I mean, I guess what does a major leap look like? Is it 35 wins? Is it 40 wins? Or do they have to get to the David Robinson, Wemby type win total? Or, I mean, uh, David Robinson, Timmy type win totals when they get to 55, 56 and go from 20 to 56? Well, I mean, I think that that would be the hope, right? If you're going to add what, mo by most people's accounts, is a generational type of talent, then you would hope that you'd be able to find some pieces to go along with, and then that would result in more wins. But you know, I've said this a million times, man. This is a league waiting to be had there's a only a handful of teams that i feel like play the game the right way that have the right players the rest of these teams are just fodder for those teams and if if you can get any semblance of moving this thing going in the right direction 
Uh, you could steamroll, I think, at some point. You also have a lot of... The West is so stacked, though. Like, how do you make that leap when most of your games are coming against the better conference? That's, I mean, that's a question that needs to be answered and won't be, won't be answered until... But, I mean, again, it's like, like, how good is Phoenix? It's like, they've got players, but how good are they as a team? I mean, I you know, I, I mean... They're pretty good. Well, they're going to be because they've got good players. What I'm saying is, is that, you know, what happens if that team learned how to play the right way? And I played mean, unselfish and, hey, you know, did the right thing. Uh, yeah. Robert Smith's in here almost every week. He says that he still believes the Spurs are about a 30, 35 win team. First of all, Robert, thank you for watching and listening. Second of all, 30, 30 would be a disappointment. Yep. I, I think, think so. I think they're over under right now is 35 and a half at Sportsbooks. 30, That's where I'm going. 36 and a half. Yeah. Something and like that. Vegas, look, Vegas knew last year, right? <laughs> Vegas made us all look really dumb last yeah. year. So <laughs> I'm, when in doubt, err on the side of Vegas. So, but I mean, if they're putting it at, 35, 36, saying plus or minus four or five wins wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So whether it's 31 or 41, I I think that they're closer to a 41-win team than they are a 31-win team. I, I'm with you on that. But when you look at the West and you have to compete with OKC, Denver, Minnesota, the Clippers. You see, we don't know how good the Clippers are going to be without PG-3 this year. Or PG-13, excuse me. Um, Dallas just went to the World or my God, went to the World Series. Went to the finals this past year. Well, they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. You're, You're right. Wrong. You're right. Yes. You're right. Texas. Mm -hmm. um, Phoenix, how good is Phoenix going to be? We don't know. The Lakers, how good are the Lakers going to be? New Orleans, are they going to take another leap? Zion's down, saying he's going to be down to 272 and is trying to stay on the court the entire year. So we'll see how that goes. Sacramento, going to be another good team. They had a down year last year, but you never know how good Sacramento is going to be. Is Golden State going to take a leap? Is Houston going to take a leap? You have all of these teams that potentially – could be on, you know, upsetting our vision for the Spurs is the best way I can think to put it. Yes, yeah, because I think it's fair that to assume that Houston's going to be better. The Sacramento Kings look like one of those teams where you feel like at some point they're, gonna they're break going to do yeah. the right things and they've got players, right? So, yeah, but that's... That's why we line them up and play, right? I mean, I mean, they we're gonna, like I said on on Thursday, we're going to find out how good Houston and San Antonio are, right? When the season tips off, they play each other three times in the first eight games, so we'll we'll get a very good picture of of those two teams. And what you see, obviously, at the beginning of the season, maybe not what you see towards the end with in regards to those two teams, but yeah, weird quirk that yeah. they would ask, see them that much. Let me ask you guys early. What do you, what do you think the value or how many wins is this like senior leadership they brought in to be on the floor? You know what I mean? Some actual yeah, five to ten, right? I mean, I would say would at least think. ten. Yeah, uh, anywhere, everywhere Chris Paul has gone, he's won. He's improved every single team he's been on. Whether that's by five wins, whether that's by seventeen wins, I think he, when he went to OKC, they improved by like seventeen wins. He improves teams because of the leadership, because of the the skill set that he brings. When you have this young of a team, hopefully. And I think Papa said this. They're receptive to that kind of leadership. They're receptive to those kinds. Well, of they damn well better be. I mean, that's right. I right. mean, you know, that's the hope. But I, I mean, wow. I mean, hopefully they'll be receptive to it. They damn well better be. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I mean, the, what you're doing right now sure as hell ain't working. The other thing that the uh, uh, ESPN on that ESPN article they made a prediction. Who is the most likely player most likely to be uh, to make an All Star team in there or for the first time? And obviously, Victor Wembanyama was far and away the top candidate right. there. 90% of people who voted voted Victor to be the most likely candidate to uh, make an all-star team for the first time. I think, which which leads to the question, what is his ceiling next year? Yeah, I mean, you would expect him to be better and more comfortable with what's going on. Maybe a more defined role to start the year as opposed to last year mm -hmm. at this time. And... You know, if we're just talking all stars, though, I mean, it's it's an exhibition. Why wouldn't you want to see somebody that, you know, there's I think genuine curiosity about, even if you, even if you get right down to it and say, well, he may not be, he may not have earned his way into over another guy or whatever. It's a freaking exhibition, yeah. right? At the end of the day, if if I'm watching an exhibition, I'd rather see somebody that, you know, I'm familiar with and that I'm curious about, as opposed to you know maybe somebody that 
will have earned his way into there. I have pretty high expectations for Victor next year for a couple of reasons. One, I think the the addition of Chris Paul is going to greatly help, we, even though we don't know what number uh, Chris Paul is going to be wearing. Keldon, That's the question. Uh, Keldon this past uh, weekend said that he will be keeping number three, so we don't know what the transaction is going to look like there for CP3 or CP13. I don't know. Anyway, um, I think that the addition of Chris Paul is really going to help or Victor. Or C3PO? Or C3... <laughs> Does have like a little Star Wars thing on it? <laughs> Uh, I think that you're going to see Victor's points per game go way up. I think you're going to see his efficiency rating go way up. I would be disappointed if he doesn't win Defensive Player of the Year, which he should win next year probably. I would be disappointed if he doesn't make an All-Pro team, which I think he could have made an argument that he made third, that he should have made a third-team All-Pro this year. But the team was so bad that he didn't get the nod on a lot of these awards. If the Spurs are a 40-win team, Let's just call it 40, and they're somewhere in the hunt for a playoff spot. He should be an all-star. He should be an all-pro or a, a uh, all-NBA team. He should be on the defensive player uh, of the year watch. He should be on an all-defensive team. He should be in the conversation for all of those things. And if they're that good, if they're in a 40-win team, he might even get a couple of votes for MVP. And then I think, then again, it would be easier to digest some of this postseason stuff in terms of awards if – the team is doing better because then that would mean that he's doing other things too to make the team and bring the team along as well. Yeah, I mean, he, the leap, the the Spurs are going to go as far as Wemby takes them next year. And if he makes the leap that he showed, if his skill set grows like he showed in the Olympics, then I think that the sky's the limit. So, uh, also shout out to Yabuselli, his teammate from France, who just signed with the uh, 76ers. I think during the all the Olympic coverage, we were like, "Dude, that guy belongs on an NBA roster." And now <laughs> here we go, right. Gar Garçon uh, yeah. Yabuselli is going to be making an NBA roster. So good for him. Um, that's all we got for you today on the Sneakers Clues podcast. Bob, is that a, is that all we got on, for comments today? It's a wrap. It's a wrap. All right. I'm my name is Chuck. It rhymes with. <laughs> Don't get another song oh, stuck in my okay. head today, please. Sorry, right. I'm gonna go. He said it's a wrap. So. I'm gonna go watch uh, more Bo Nix highlights in, in, my, in, my, in my cubicle. That was an excellent throw on that touchdown that he threw. It was running away from pressure and diamond it like that. I both. And it was a laser. I believe, guys. That's all we got for today on the Sneakers and Cleats Podcast. Remember to join, uh, rate, review, subscribe, give us a five star rating, tell a friend, tell an enemy. We'll be back on Thursday and. Uh, Probably talking more Spurs and probably talking more Cowboys. So we'll see you then. Go Browns.